Okay, so this is part two of 6.9. We'll be talking about the inverse hyperbolic trig functions. So let's start off with the hyperbolic function. Looks like we need to restrict it because it's not one to one. And there's the inverse. Domain is the range, range is the domain. Let's do it for cinch x. This is one to one. Okay, so here's our domain and range of the other hyperbolic fun trig functions. So here's the definition of all of the inverse trig functions. I'm just going to show you one of them. We're going to show this one. So it is important that the original, we had to restrict the domain. So we're going to take the cosh of both sides and we get the cosh of y. This is how we did it in our inverse section. Equals the cosh of the cosh inverse of x is just plain old x. So we have x equals cosh of y. I just flip flopped them, which is e to the y. So we're going to clear that fraction. So remember to find the inverse. We flip the x and y. That's the x and y being flipped. And then we solve for y, put it in function notation. I mean, that is the inverse, but we want to find out, show that it's equal to this by solving for y. Clear our fraction. And we do have e to the 2y and e to the y. Looks like, kind of like a quadratic form. So let's get 0 on one side. Put that term in the middle. So we're going to let... We're going to solve for that unknown, which is my quadratic form, e to the y, using the quadratic formula, where a is 1, b is minus 2x, and c is 1. Minus b is positive 2x, plus or minus the square root of b squared, minus 4 times a times c. Again, just plugging these into the quadratic formula all over 2 times a, which is 1. Simplify this. So this is basically both sides of the parabola, sideways, obviously. But if we take the natural log of both sides, we just want the right half of the parabola. So we're going to use the right half right there. The negative is the left half. We had to restrict it. And our y was our cosh inverse. And so that's the definition we got. Same formula. So that's how they worked all those out. So if we wanted to find the derivative of the inverses, we can just use this these right side if we wanted to. I'm going to write out all the derivatives, though. Once you find sine and cosine, you can use quotients of those also. Here's the derivatives of the six inverse hyperbolic trig functions. And again, I'm just going to pick one out and show it. We'll do this one. So we start with the left side. We write what the inverse hyperbolic trig function is equal to. It's from the list above. And then we take the derivative. So this really isn't anything new. And before I take the derivative, I do not want to do the derivative of the inside of a quotient rule. So I will use trig identities. 
So I will use logarithmic properties. Quotient means subtract. We can bring that half to the front. Take the derivative. It's one over the argument. And then the derivative of the inside. That's just times one. And then times minus one. The derivative of that is minus one. Common denominator. We multiply that out, and that is what it was equal to. There's the derivative. We can actually do this another way, implicitly, which means we want to rewrite it. Take the derivative of both sides in terms of x. Oops, we've got to chain rule it. And here's where I'm going to use a trig identity. I do want to write this out as a squared, and y is my tan inverse. And hopefully you can see composition cancels, and you get x squared is already there. So that's another way we can find the derivative of the inverse, which is the method we used in the last section. Okay, have a good day.